You might have heard of this race last year. Maybe you were lucky enough to see every lap, unlike anything we've done in a long, long time. About a half a lap away from looking for the green flag. Dirt, it's where we come from. It's what started this whole thing. Yeah, you can say we make a lot of left turns, but it's not often we also make left turns so sideways. It's nice to be different. Sure, we are trucks, and that's different, but this track can be a game changer. Battle for the lead. If anyone slips, even for a fraction of a second, we will take the upper hand. The season is picking up, and some of us are ready to separate from the rest of the pack. This becomes more than just a dirt track feature. It's where some of us will make our mark, some will fail, and others will do anything to mix it up. To prove who can escape unscathed and one step closer. Today, the championship is waiting for someone to take control. You'll want to see what happens next, right here at Eldora Speedway, and only at Fox Sports 1. Tenth race of 2014, and we come back to the dirt for the Mud Summer Classic from Eldora Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio. Drivers, we've got to keep our eye on tonight. After a 43-year hi hiatus, NASCAR put a dirt track back on the schedule, and Austin Dillon cashed in. His winning truck is back in the RCR Museum, but Austin's here to defend his title. Jared Hefner, not a name many in the NASCAR circles have heard much about, because he's never officially made a start in the trucks. Well, tonight, he starts 16th. Tyler Reddick, the 18-year-old, may only have a career-best finish of eighth in the trucks, but tonight he's in his comfort zone on the dirt at Eldora. Kyle Larson came up one position short a year ago, and that's why the Cup Rookie of the Year contender put this race back on his schedule. And now it's time to fire the engine. Race fans, it's time for the most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome the Grand Marshal for tonight's 1-800 Car Cash Mud Summer Classic, sales manager for Camping World of Indianapolis, Paul Stickle. Drivers, start your engines! The engines have fired, and that means the fans are fired up for 150 laps, 75 miles from Eldora Speedway. We're back on the dirt, which means anyone can win at a racetrack like this, Michael. Well, you got to have dirt experience to win, right? No, no, that's not true. <laughs> Eric Jones never run a dirt race. He's sitting on the pole. You got to start near the front, right? Well, the Dillon boys are both outside of the top 10. Austin qualified 19th last year and won. You can't have hit the wall, possibly, and win this race, right? Well, if that's the case, we're not going to have a winner because right. everybody down there has already run into the wall. This race promises to be one of the most exciting, intense races of the year. It's awesome here at Eldora. And strategy has to come into play. Obviously, when we come to a dirt track, we've changed the rules a little bit. They don't have to come to pit road on these competition cautions. Yeah, they really don't. We also have Kyle Larson said, I don't know where the best place to run is. Yeah. I mean, you normally run up top. That's what worked last year. But we saw some speed down at the bottom and in the middle. So nobody really knows exactly what they're going to have to do to get around this racetrack quickly. And they're going to have to maneuver around it. They're going to have to change. They're going to have to start on the bottom maybe and move up or vice versa. And there is some strategies. You mentioned we changed the rules. You do not have to pit during the competition cautions everybody i talked to in the garage area said we're not pitting on that last competition caution because we want track position we don't think that we can make it on fuel the whole way or it might be too close so we'll probably stop between the first and second segment but the last segment we're going to be out there for th the last two segments without stopping it's and going to be exciting but this is such a great track it's dirt obviously the banking in the corners progressive tony stewart and his staff have done an amazing job working these corners and they took some of the banking out up top so that's why i think we saw the bottom groove maybe have a bit of advantage at times during the, the course of the day but when kyle larson says he doesn't know where he's going to run he's one of the best dirt racers of the country i guess we're all looking uh, are going to be surprised to see how this thing turns out all well, the drivers have options as we continue to look at our camping world track description and race analysis 150 50 laps, 75 miles, three separate segments, and this year you do not have to come in on those competition cautions. I think, like Phil said, I think these guys will all pit the first time and they won't the next time. They've got to have that track position late. Trucks begin to roll. Let's go to Hermie Seven. 
Well, Rick, when you think about coming to Eldora, there's so much excitement about being here and all the hoopla surrounding this event. It gives it almost an all-star race feel. But we got to remember that this is a points-paying event tonight at Eldora. We've got a championship battle and a good one at that in the Camping World Truck Series. Look at our top five in the points and where they start tonight. Some drivers start towards the front, some closer to the back that have to make their way to the front. Different varying skills in dirt racing. Inevitably, somebody will help their chances and somebody will hurt their chances to win a championship tonight here at Eldora. Ray? Ermy, Kyle Busch Motorsports has won 10 of the last 14 races and Toyota has had a stranglehold on this series. But tonight, I think Chevrolet might be in the catbird seat. They have loaded up their guns here this weekend. They've got some great drivers. How about Kyle Larson who finished second last year? The Dillon brothers are here and many more, but I'm gonna have my eye on Ron Hornaday tonight. He's a 51 time winner, four time champion, and he's won the most races ever on short tracks. He's never won on dirt. And if he could win tonight at Eldora, he might just erase that 23 point deficit. Right now he's fifth in points. Bob Dillner. Ray, everybody dreams of winning here on the dirt at Eldora. But for J.R. Hefner, it's just a dream come true just to make the race. Last year, he was one of the fastest trucks on the racetrack and failed to make the big dance. Today, he's in the show. He starts 16th. He's 42 years old and is a track champion at Lebanon Valley Speedway in New York. But tonight's race means a lot to him because he believes he has a challenging truck for the victory here today. It would be a Cinderella story for J.R. Hefner. Guys? Thanks, Bob. A great story for J.R. Hefner as he is making his first start in the Camping World Truck Series. We're going to ride along with a few different trucks. We have some great camera positions, and some of those are right inside these trucks. Yeah, this is a young man that's the only NASCAR winner on dirt since 1970. Austin Dillon won this race last year. He will try to take that American Ethanol Chevy back to victory lane for the second time, and he starts in the same spot, 19th as last year. Hey, boys, good job. We'll roll up through there. <laughs> Pretty confident, is he? How about we hop on board the 21-year-old Kyle Larson from California? He's won here at Eldora in midgets and sprint cars and silver crown cars, but he wants this truck win. He was second here a year ago to roll off 11th in the Glad Chevy. Tyler Reddick was the youngest driver to ever start the World 100 late model race here a couple years ago, and he's looking for a victory here at Eldora, and he will start his Broken Bow records forward from the eighth spot. Joey Coulter starts seventh in the Allegiant Chevy. He ran uh, fourth here a year ago, not a lot of dirt experience. Look for him to build on that fourth place finish, though. One thing very unique with dirt track racing around the country at short tracks all across America is a four wide salute to the fans. This is for the fans that come out and enjoy dirt track racing week in and week out. And this one's NASCAR style. Four wide as they parade around this half mile historic dirt track. I'm not sure they won't race like this. <laughs> it will probably end up four wide for position at the drop of the green flag. But the fireworks are flying early, and they're going to fly once again when the green flag goes in the air. But right now, it's the salute to the fans, and the fans all on their feet appreciating what all these drivers have been able to do all day and are getting ready to do for the next 150 laps in Aurora Speedway. That's quite a sight, isn't it, guys? That's amazing. I love all the, the phones. Everyone yes. had their phone up as the four wide went by the grandstands all the way around this racetrack, including us, as well as you guys. <laughs> How cool is our sport of NASCAR racing? We're at a half mile dirt track in, the, in Ohio, and the, this place is packed. There's standing room only. So many wonderful fans and I want to tell you if you play a game with your buddies at home when you got to punch somebody when when a word said I think today's punch word was fun I mean the drivers will hit the wall and spin out and come in and say man we're just having so much fun <laughs> this race is going to be a lot of fun and it's about to get underway it's the second annual mud summer classic from Eldora Speedway it had been 43 years since NASCAR had raced on dirt prior to last year's race and Austin Dillon came from the 19th starting position to grab 
the trophy and history. You, you know, we talk about the diverse schedule that our, our drivers are faced with in the truck series. They're going to run a road course. We're on dirt here. They run Daytona. They run Talladega. Rick, I can't believe how much this place reminds me of Daytona and Talladega. I know it's a half mile. I know it's dirt, but they're going to be four wide. We're talking about J.R. Hefner, a guy that hasn't even been around maybe having a truck to win the race with. There's so many different stories stretched throughout that whole field, and uh, it's going to be an intense 150 laps. J.R. Hefner could be the next John King. Remember when John King won at Daytona? Out of nowhere. Next thing you know, John King is a winner in the Camping World Truck Series. And could we have another first-time winner? And who knows what the stories will be when this night's over. Last year, it was Norm Benning racing his way in through the last chance race and having a chance to be in this event. What will be the story we talk about for a year to come after this race is over tonight? Derek Jones is going to choose the outside for this initial start. That's where he thinks the most grip is going to be. Rick? 4,178 days ago, you called us to green at Daytona <laughs> for your first it's been ever a long time. time. Let's do it again. It's been a great run, guys. I've never enjoyed anything anymore in my whole life, and I have working with you guys up here. This is just the best racing that we have in NASCAR, in my opinion, and you do a great job of helping us call this race, Rick. Well, I'm glad we have fun week in and week out. And once again, the hard left turn by the pace truck that puts the field in the hands of Eric Jones on the high side coming out of turn number four. Green flag in the air. We're underway from Eldora. You guessed it. Four wide as they go down the back stretch for position. Matt Crafton was on the bottom of the racetrack and Kyle Larson went underneath him. Matt Crafton thought he was on the bottom of the racetrack. And I see four wide, two or three rows back. The field working their way through lap number one and on to two. Eric Jones out in front. Jeff Burton running in the second spot. The 30 of Ron Hornaday holding tough on the bottom of the racetrack in third. I think Kyle Larson gave up getting underneath Matt Crafton on the bottom. Matt was down there the whole time. Crafton hugging that inside line, trying to hold on to that position near the top ten. I just don't see how they do it. I don't see how they don't wreck every lap. They're all over one another. He tied Dillon, that three truck in the middle. Kyle Larson now has moved up to the top. Now he's going to drive down in the middle and follow, follow that three car. This is Tyler Reddick's number 19 truck with Kenny Schrader, the 52, right behind him. And right beside him is Joey Coulter. You see the Allegiant Chevy there. Coulter's trying to make ground on the inside. Seventh, eighth, and ninth all right there. As we look back on Reddick. There comes Ty Dillon in the three. Working that bottom line once again, hugging. That inside wall trying to find some grip as he races with Joey Coulter in the 21. Meanwhile, while all this is going on, we have a guy that's never run a race on dirt before out in the lead, Eric Jones. Eric Jones staying out of dirt races, wanting to make this one his first ever dirt start. And he's been impressive since the drop of the green flag, since the drop of the green flag earlier today. You know, it's real important at this point in the race, guys. You, you don't want to do something early that's going to hurt your chances for the whole night. Get into the outside wall a little too hard, knock your toe off, knock a fender in. That could end your night. So you got to have a little bit of patience here early in the going. And I know that sounds silly to say, considering they were four wide, but you better tiptoe a bit. This first segment is a 60-lap segment. We break it into three segments, 60, 50, and 40. So the longest segment starts us off. Then, as you mentioned, Phil, the strategy will come into play. Will they come onto pit road right after that first segment, or will they wait until after the second segment? They don't have to come onto pit road at any time. They will hold their position once the yellow flag has come out, but if you stay out on the track, you keep that track position. And if you do come to pit road, you come off, you come off of pit road in the lineup that you were on the racetrack, other than the people that stayed out, you will start behind them. But I think that a lot of the guys are concerned about having enough fuel to stay on the track for the whole race. So word in the pit area was that we'll see pit stops after the first break, but then everybody will stay on the track after. How difficult is it to not make a mistake on a discipline that's so different from what most of these drivers do? These guys are going to hit the wall 10, 15 times this race. They're going to scrape the wall. They've already worn the right rear quarter panels off of these trucks. And we've seen guys like Kyle Larson, who's great on dirt, has spun in practice earlier today. 
in the first practice session, four of the five fastest trucks all spun out. And then the fastest truck that did spin out in the first one spun out in the second one. Ty Dillon in the threes up to 13th. He's moved up six positions from his initial start. It's Eric Jones out in front of the field at Eldora. Once again, the truck series is on the dirt and under the lights at Eldora Speedway. It's the second annual Bud Summer Classic. And, once and the again, battle for the lead happens again. Eric Jones in front of the 13 of Jeff Burton. Burton has been peeking to the inside, trying to steal that top spot. The top four nose to tail. How about Bubba Wallace now looks to the inside of the 30 of Hornaday. That's a battle for the third spot. These four have been staying right up against the wall. Only Jeff Burton has ventured down to the inside, trying to find some grip. And that time by, it looked as though the 30 of Hornaday may have bounced off the wall. But the 13 holding on to second, right? Jeff Burton told me earlier that they get a lot of air pressure gain, and it hurts their stagger on his Estes Toyota. So he said he'd really like to change tires on this first pit stop. He said, if we can change tires, I think I can run the last couple segments and stay up there and keep my track position. Hermie? Well, Ray Ron Hornaday so far is having just the kind of night that he needs. He's coming off a disappointing 21st place finish at Owl. He's not really known to be a dirt racing superstar, but I tell you right now, he's up in the third position, really moving the truck around to find more grip. He has been quiet on the radio so far, Bob. Well, Hermie Ty Dillon is on a mission. He was just told by his team that he has the fastest truck on the racetrack and to take care of it. He has moved all the way back from 13th to a top five running spot right now. And Ty told me there's a big difference from this year to last year. Last year, he was running for points. Today, he's got nothing to lose, guys. Out there having fun and looking very impressive as he has broken into the top five now. Just a couple laps ago, Ron Hornet, I thought he may have slapped the wall coming out of turn number four. Did more than that, he hit it pretty hard. Yeah, he was racing pretty hard. That's Bubba Wallace to his inside. You see Ron bouncing off the wall and never lost a position, still maintains that third spot. That's a great battle for the lead, but guys, we've got battles all over the racetrack. These trucks are side by side and bouncing off of one another from first to 30th, it looks like. Kyle Larson just made the move by the 21 of Joey Coulter to move up to the ninth spot. That third position still in jeopardy for Ron Hornaday as we look back on Kyle Larson in the 32. Ron, Ryan Blaney in the 29. Also got into the wall, but this time it's Jeff Burton making the pass on the 51 and the 35 of Mason Mingus goes around, but we stay green. Mason gets it rolling, so we are going to stay green. Looks like Bubba Wallace is finally going to, is also going to get around the 51 truck. So the 51 truck falling off the pace a bit now as Jeff Burton has gotten by. Hornaday's been by. They got so, flat. And now the 51 is falling back even further as we see the three of Ty Dillon going by. What's going on, Ray? Flat right uh, Eric rear. Jones just came on the radio and said the right rear is going down. Right rear going down, and the yellow flag is out. That'll be a big break for him. Caution does come out. We saw that right rear go down, completely down. Yeah, truck isn't going to go away that fast. He fell right right from the lead outside the back to the fifth spot and then finally the tire completely went down and around the wind. Boy, I've been so impressed though with Ty Dillon. What a march he's made since the drop of the green flag. Well up into the top five then obviously takes over the fourth spot with Eric Jones problem. Kyle Larson also making a move. He's up into the sixth position when this caution comes out. Take a look at the ride Eric Jones had though as that right rear tire went away. What about Johnny Sauter? Okay, how's this going to end well for me? Seem slide that right front or left front tire. Tyler Reddick watching as he makes it into turn three. When Johnny stops because he doesn't know exactly what Eric Jones is going to do, watch Tyler Reddick just turn left and drive by them both. So the first caution comes out. Eric Jones will have to make his way onto pit road and change that right rear. Welcome back to Eldora Speedway. We're once again under the lights and on the dirt for the Bud Summer Classic. Reason for the caution. 
is the 51 of Eric Jones. The right rear tire goes away on that one, and around he goes. Does a nice job not getting it in the outside wall. Johnny Sauter does a great job avoiding him. Ray, he came to pit road. Yeah, they put a right rear on that, and you can see right here, guys, there's a cut right in this tire. They filled it back up with air, and it is blowing out right there. So that was the problem. He obviously ran over something, and NASCAR has told them they can go get another tire to replace this one. Well, this would be fun to watch. Jones has been <laughs> yeah. impressive in his first dirt race ever. Started on the pole, held the lead. Now he gets to come from the back and see what he can do. Jeff Burton chooses the ins or the outside line. Ron Hornaday will start on the inside. Ty Dillon, as we mentioned, the man on the move up into the top four. He'll start fourth. There Wallace Jr. in the third position on the inside of row number two. Coming out of turn number four, two by two they go once again. And the green flag back in the air. For a slow restart here. Look at trucks on the inside. They're not allowed to do that. Oh, some trucks on the inside. Has to look like J.R. Hefner. I'm sure the NASCAR officials will monitor that. Take, take a look at it. Take a look and see if he gets the position back. They bottled up. Looked like, a, as you mentioned, a slow restart for Jeff Burton and the 30 of Hornaday. Hornaday has the lead as they cross the stripe. He's got the high line and trying to take the lead away from Jeff Burton. NASCAR is waving the black flag at a at some truck. I think it's a 63 of J.R. Hefner for that start. So he'll... Uh, That'll be very costly for JR, a truck we thought could contend for possibly a top five finish, even the win. He was passing before the start finish line. That's not allowed. There's JR right there. He will have to make his way to pit road. And a lot of people are running down there right on the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to be right in the line as he comes to pit road here. So drivers behind him are going to have to be heads up here. Yeah, not there's there's no hand out that window too, Phil. So. If he tries to go down pit road right now, he's got a truck all over his back bumper. It's not going to happen this time by. Still up front, Ron Hornaday has the top spot. Here comes Jeb Burton once again, looking to the inside. What a coaching job Tracy Hines has done for this young man today, huh? Tracy's a dirt track champion, winner, and I heard him talking with Jeb, Jeb through a lot of practice today, and Jeb listened well, and look at him leading the race. Oh, got a spinner. It's Eric Jones. Eric Jones around again, right in front of the flag stand. Caution comes out. Holy cow, I cannot believe he didn't hit anything or nobody hit him. Did you see that? It looked Brian, like Brian Silas yeah. might have got a piece of the wall or possibly the 51 truck there, but as he was spinning. Caution comes out again for Eric Jones. That was coming off turn number four. Well, he spun and got the pole. Maybe he's going to spin and win, huh? Around he went. Oh, oh Silas. Yeah. In the outside wall. Possibility of Brian Silas getting the wall, definitely. Under our second caution from Eldora Speedway, Blood Summer Classic. Out in front of this field, it's Ron Hornaday. Jeff Burton has been all over his back bumper. 40 of the 60 first lap or first segment laps have been complete. Currently running back in the sixth spot is Tyler Reddick. Here's what his team had to say about the preferred lines around this racetrack. The threes are the only truck that was moving there, Tyler. The 32 kept trying some pretty massive slide jobs, diving all the way to the bottom of both corners, but he just lose the run by the middle. So right now it seems like the top's still the place. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing. I'll let you know if anything changes. So the top seems to be the place, at least that's what the communications from the 19 team are saying. And right behind him, 32 of Kyle Larson. And this truck hasn't made a whole lot of progress. I think everybody's a bit surprised he hasn't gone better than he has. What's uh, what, the, what are they saying down there in Schrader's pit, Bob? Well, Mikey, honestly, Kenny Schrader hasn't said a word on the radio. I spoke to his crew chief, Donnie Richardson, and he believes everything is A-OK. -okay. But I think you got to go back to experience here. Schrader has won four times on this racetrack in different race cars. He's got that experience. And Schrader told me earlier today, there's only one lap that pays the big bucks, and that's the last lap, guys. Jeff Burton, Ron Hornaday. Making up row number one. Once again, the field coming out of four. We're back to racing.
much more sanitary restart there. Everybody on the front straightaway two by two, but when they get on the back straightaway, that all changes. Still side by side for the lead. Here comes Ty Dillon. Look at the inside of that 30 as well, fighting for second now. How about Jeb Burton with a strong power move and a power slide? Ron Hornaday working to the inside. He's going to try to take it back. He'll slide in front of the 13, and here comes the 13 right back as they go down the back stretch. Ooh, Jeb tried to turn under Hornaday, got really loose. That's going to open the door for Bubba Wallace on the outside. There, Wallace Jr. running that 54 right on the high line up against the wall, and he's got Ty Dillon all over his back bumper. Bubba had never run dirt before he came here last year. Ended up with a top 10 finish. Man, he's got a strong truck tonight. I think he's going to be able to make a run on Hornaday here pretty quickly. Darrell Wallace Jr. following right his tire tracks. We see Kyle Larson working around the 98 of Johnny Sauter. Sauter trying that lower line. Got Kyle Larson all the way up to the sixth spot. Did Jeff Burton, the 13 truck, Ty Dillon, the three truck, fighting for the third spot. Looks like Jim has it for now. The high line, the preferred line right now. We'll see how many start to dive down to see if they can steal a position away. As we've completed 46 laps of the 60 in this first segment. 14 to go in this first segment. But was wanting that lead, didn't he? He can taste it. We'll have a competition caution at lap 60. Once again, the battle continues between Hornaday and Darrell Wallace Jr. for the lead. You know, one thing we haven't said a whole lot about is the fact that Toyotas have won every single race this year. Kyle Busch Motorsports that Bubba Wallace drives for has won seven as he goes for the lead. Slide job on Ron Hornaday. Is he going to make it stick? He's got the outside line. Here comes Hornaday on the inside. He leads that lap, and Hornaday trying to steal that position back right up against the wall and into the wall goes Darrell Wallace Jr. to fight back for that lead. Rick, how many times have he said into the wall and takes the lead? And that's exactly what Bubba Wallace did around the outside of Hornaday. What a power move by Bubba Wallace. Darrell Wallace Jr. got the lead, didn't want to give it back up. Hornaday fighting for it on the inside. But now it's Hornaday back to second. Jeb Burton in the third spot. Ty Dillon fourth. Tyler Reddick is fifth. Ray talked about how Chevy really stacked the field coming here. They have Kyle Larson here. Ty Dillon, Austin Dillon, guys that don't normally run these truck races. And we have a Toyota up front with Bubba Wallace. I'm really impressed with that three truck, though, of Ty Dillon. Phil, he had that thing hung out all through practice, really running the high line. And early in this race, he's one of the fastest trucks as well. Another Toyota that's up in the top ten. Johnny Sauter running in the seventh spot, right? And Rick, you remember a year ago, he got wrecked early in the race, ended up finishing 29th. Sauter knows he needs a good points race tonight, so he's keeping an eye on that. But right now, he does has a really, really touchy throttle. He said every time he touches the throttle, it feels like the rear wheels are spinning all the way through the corner. They're going to pull a couple spring rubbers out on our first pit stop. They are, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the rear wheels are spinning all the way through the corner. You know, it'd be interesting to see Kyle Larson. You can see on the high side there behind Tyler Reddick. Kyle's starting to make some moves. He's pulled up to the sixth spot. Looks like he's got a fast truck in the long run along with Kenny Schrader. He's starting to try to make some passes on the bottom of the track. You see Tyler Reddick We're riding along with Tyler Reddick as he was looking back on Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson holding on to that six spot Herbie. Well Rick Kyle Larson started to make a move towards the front. He started back in the 11th position. It took him about 15 or 20 laps to find a lane that he could make some traffic up, make some ground up in the middle of the traffic. He's found some grip around the middle part of the racetrack and he's making his way towards the front. Been very quiet on the radio. He like everybody else is planning to stop at lap 60 and then stay on the racetrack to the very very end. So the changes they make with that 32 truck need to be good. He's dropped back there to the sixth position. Great battle here for the second spot. Remember, that's going to result in who will restart on the front row here. Whoever can win this battle for the second spot after the first competition caution. Jeff Burton down to the bottom of the track. Here comes Ty Dillon trying to make it three wide for that second position. Phil, that's provided that no one stays out. Right. You could have trucks stay out and say, heck, I think we can make it all the way. we got to take a chance. 
could be some strategy played on this first stop. And that may be exactly what somebody like Eric Jones does, who spun out now, lost all his track position. He's made his way back up to the 15th spot, but he may try to make something happen that way. Ron Hornaday still holding on to second. Tyler, or Ty Dillon, has moved up into that third spot now. Jeb Burton back to fourth. And Ty Dillon looking to the inside of the 30. And awfully close to the end of this first segment. Just completed lap number 58. We talked about how important it is to have a truck for the good for the long run. Look at Kenny Schrader. He's trying to take away the seventh spot from Johnny Sauter racing beside Ryan Blaney. But Schrader's truck's hooked up. Not many people being able to make moves down on the bottom. But Schrader's doing it. Schrader trying to find some of that grip that everyone's been searching for here at Eldora. Looking for it in the middle of the track. Oh, Looking don't for do second. It. Ty Dillon takes the position away from Hornaday. Hornaday into the wall, and that will allow the 13 of Jeff Burton to get by. You said it right, Rick. Takes that position away from Ron Hornaday. That's exactly what Ty Dillon did. He just forced the issue and was able to get away with it. We are on the 60th lap. This is the length of the first segment. We would expect a competition caution when the race leader gets back to the start finish line. Right now, that is Daryl Wallace Jr., who is out in front. He crosses the start finish line. Still racing four positions. We've got Ty Dillon back in second, Jeff Burton, Ron Hornaday, Tyler Reddick, Kyle Larson, Johnny That's Sauter, Ken Schrader, Ryan Blaney, Timothy Peters, your top 10. That's far let the whole field cycle past the start finish line and then throw that competition caution somewhere around. There Lap it is. 60. There it is. Just before the race leader got back to the start finish line, the competition comes out. Now, once again, the way the field is frozen when this competition caution comes out, they can choose to come onto pit road. The positions that they're in, they will stay in. No matter how long they're on pit road, they will restart in those same positions. But the people who stay out on the track will be able to gain that track position if they choose not to come to pit road. I think we're going to have some takers on staying out. Oh, I don't know. Some guys that want to try to push the issue to get a little track position, quite possibly. I mean, think about Eric Jones, like you said. Matt Crafton has been very solid running back in the in the 16th spot. John West Townley hanging right in there. I don't know for sure, Phil, if I wasn't some of those trucks, trucks that show some speed in the longer run, I wouldn't just have to stay out and take a chance. I don't know about Matt Crafton. He's there pointing it. Does he want to take a chance of running out of fuel when he's when he's going to bypass a couple opportunities to put fuel in? It would be a big gamble. Michael Afarano, who was a lap down, will get that lap back from this caution. And now everybody on the track is on the lead lap. Everybody's on the lead lap <laughs> and still running all 30 trucks still running on the lead lap So once the field is all in line According to the scoring monitor everyone is in their position single file They'll have the opportunity to come to pit row. I love it. I love this race. I love these trucks on dirt I love the decisions that have to be made. How are we going to win this race? Here's the strategy right here. We talked about at the top of the show. I, th I still think the right play right here is to come down pit road and this be the last time you come down pit road. And pit road is now open. So the opportunity is available for everyone on the track. And race leader Darrell Wallace Jr. makes the hard left turn. Bob Dillner. Ken Schrader will bring his number 52 car to the attention of his team down there. And that truck right now needs a little bit better drive up off is what the team is telling me. So they're going to make some adjustments on that truck as he comes to a stop in his pit stall right there. And you see that they will do a four tire change on Ken Schrader's truck. Hermie. Bob, it's been a frustrating season for Turner Scott Motorsports right now. Ron Hornaday and Kyle Larson running up front for this team very same agenda for both of these trucks the 30 and the 32 four tires and wedge in both trucks Ray Jeff Burton said he definitely wants to change tires he talked about how he was getting a lot of air pressure gain they will definitely do that at the very front of the field we also have Bubba Wallace in Bubba said you got to check the right front fender for me guys because I got into horn today pretty decent there they put Sunoco fuel in it and four brand new Goodyear Eagles they'll get him ready to go back to the racetrack 
And they're checking that front fender to make sure there's plenty of clearance. And right now, Bubba says, you don't have to make any adjustments. This truck is absolutely on rails. Well, a couple of guys took a chance, including our point leader, Matt Kraft, did he stay down? Unbelievable. Shaking it up early. Welcome back to the Mud Summer Classic, segment 160 laps complete here at Eldora Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio. And we've already seen a lot of action. Kyle Larson, one of the guys we said would be a factor, would be one to watch. He's been working his way from the back of the field. When we talked to him before the race started, he said he really didn't feel like he necessarily had it figured out the way he did last year. Well, he certainly made it look like he does right now in that 32 truck coming up through the field and doing things heck of a job so far in this first segment. Standing on top of the building here overlooking the front stretch at Eldora Speedway. And if you've been joining us throughout the day, you've heard us talk a lot about the voice of our series, our leader, Rick Allen. You've probably figured out by now, this is Rick's last truck series race. At the driver's meeting today, he was honored and recognized all of the drivers thanking him for everything he's done for the sport, for the series. Now, Rick is not going far. He'll be still at the racetrack. He'll actually be calling Sprint Cup races for NBC. We are excited for his opportunity. Uh, Rick being very humble there with the drivers and the fans. But I will say we are uh, excited for him, and we know that no other uh, group in television probably has as much fun as we have here in the truck series. And Rick is a big part of that. Like I said, you've been uh, our leader, the voice of the series for the last 12 years. You will most certainly be missed. Well, thank you, Chris. I really appreciate that. It was, it was quite humbling and an honor to uh, be announced at the truck series uh, drivers meeting and everyone stood up and I was a little bit embarrassed by that, but uh, it, it's been a great time. And, and I think it's the people. Obviously, uh, working with you two guys has been, you know, the greatest thing I've ever done. So I've had a, a phenomenal time. You guys have been like brothers, and um, you're fun. We're you're gonna fun miss to be you. Around. We're gonna <laughs> miss you. But we, you're not gonna you're not gonna go far. But we're no, gonna miss be being up here with you like we have been for a long time. Like Krista said, you're our leader. You set the tone for how these broadcasts go. And and Phil and I just like to like to have fun with you and enjoy these races. I think the fans at home can tell. This is good stuff, and we've, we've got a, we've really got it made because of the fact that these trucks put on such a great show. And uh, thank you for making the last 12 years so special for me. It's a lot of fun, I'll tell you that much. And we're going to have a lot more fun. We still have 90 laps taking place from right here at Eldora. Now let's go to Will Silva in Los Angeles. Welcome back as we're getting ready for segment number two. This one will be 50 laps. For the Camping World Truck Series and the Mud Summer Classic from Eldora Speedway. Out in front of the field, Darrell Wallace Jr. and Ty Dillon. Darrell Wallace Jr. has chose the outside line. Green flag back in the air. Four or five different ideas on where the grip's going to be. That's part of the interest of safety, Rick. Put, uh, the first 15 trucks on pit road didn't allow Matt Crafton 16th on back to come to pit road. So that's why Crafton didn't pit the first time by. He eventually came to pit road, and that's why the lineup is back to how we saw it when we left. The strategy was to come onto pit road that competition caution, and everyone took advantage of it. Look at Ron Horner. They remember Ty Dillon kind of used Ron up a little bit when he got made his way by him. I, I can tell Ron remembers it. <laughs> and look and at he, Jeff Burton. He's reminding Ty Dillon of it. The caution comes out. Kyle Larson bounced off the fence about the time the caution flag came out. Kyle had got up into the fifth position. Johnny Sauter was sixth. Don't don't worry about that though. Kyle's done that a bunch today and he's <laughs> going to have a truck. These boys will have to beat if they want to win here at Eldora. Turner Scott Motorsports has put some reinforcement in the right side of that truck as much as he has been off the wall and still running as strong as he is really want to keep my eye on that truck of Kyle Larson running outside right there in the fifth spot. Watch Ron Hornaday. Might have come out of out from under the yeah. 54 truck. It looked like the 54. This is Joey Coulter we're riding along with. Oh, and there's a piece right there. It's out of one of the BKR trucks. Looks like the 19 of Tyler Reddick. Watch Kyle Larson here. 
flying he, up in the air. He hits the debris and then does he hit the wall afterwards? He's going to bounce off the wall right there. Just coming out of turn number four. So under competition or caution one more time in the Mud Summer Classic. Green flag just going back in the air, and they're two and three wide as they battle for the lead going down the backstretch. How about Kyle Larson drives all the way down to the inside of the racetrack. Now he's side by side with Jim Burton for fourth. Look at John Hunter Nemechek. He's driving to the bottom of the track. Trying to get around Kenny Schrader. Trying to find that grip as they work their way back out onto the front stretch. In front of this field, Darrell Wallace Jr., Ron Hornaday running second, Ty Dillon up to the third spot. Dillon all over the back bumper of Ron Hornaday, and here comes Kyle Larson in the 32. About three wide behind them, two rows deep. Coming out of turn number four. Top four spots, Hornaday. Following after Darrell Wallace Jr. Ty Dillon holding on to third. Larson is fourth. Back in the fifth position, Jeff Burton. Really and impressed. Two and three wide back behind them. Really impressed with the job that John Hunter Nemechek has done. He's up into the top ten right now, running in the seventh spot, making some ground up, trying to pull up beside Jeff Burton. And look how low he's running. He's as low as we've seen anybody this whole race. He's finding some grip down there, and it won't take long for these other racers to fall in behind him. Take a look at that. Off of Austin Dillon's bumper as he looks over at Eric Jones. Eric had a flat tire, spun out, and then spun out again. And right now we're running in the 12th spot. But he spun out on his qualifying lap when the next lap got the pole. So if he wins tonight, <laughs> spin and win. We'll know what his key is. Pretty Look wide. At, Timothy Peters making a move on that low side. I don't really understand John Hunter bailing on the low side. He drove by those guys and went straight to the top. Got up to the sixth spot in front of the 29 of Ryan Blaney. And look who's down there now, Timothy Peters, well on the bottom of the racetrack. And he's going to drive up beside Nemechek. And Schrader watching all that as he moves up the track a little bit. Ryan Blaney in the 29 running the middle line now. Looks like that bottom works a little bit better down in three and four. Ty Dillon has made his way up into the top three. Bob Dilder. He is one of the best trucks on the racetrack right now. He moved from 13th and he just gave up second to go in a torrid battle with Ron Hornaday. But he was reporting that that truck was just a little bit too loose before the break. So his crew chief, Danny Stockman, put four tires on it and made an air pressure adjustment. But that's it. Ty Dillon right now pacing himself in that third spot, Hermie. Well, Bob Kyle Lawson is chasing the three truck on the racetrack, and he just bounced off the wall a couple laps ago, as we saw now. His crew chief is Mike Hillman Jr., and the only thing Mike was concerned about was the right front. He asked Kyle a couple times, is your steering wheel still set? Like you said it, he wanted to make sure the toe in didn't have damage. Once, once Kyle said, yeah, we're good to go, no more talk about that crash, he is going to the inside of the three for a position, Craig. Matt Crafton knew there was something wicked wrong with this Menards Toyota. He said it was like riding a dolphin in the water, up and down, up and down, the nose jamming into the ground. So when he came in at the competition caution, they found out they had a broken right rear shock. The team replaced it, pulled a couple of rubbers, and he has now moved from 17 up to 14. He's heading right and back in the right direction. Coming up on his teammate, Johnny Sauter. And you remember also Kyle Larson said his truck wasn't exactly like he liked it for most of the day. He said, I got to get some good adjustments from my crew chief, Mike Hillman Jr., so that I can get up there and contend with these guys. After coming to pit road, that truck is really fast now. He's trying to battle for the lead. Look at Matt Crafton. He's down on the inside of Joey Coulter trying to race up into the top 12. Crafton running that middle line now. Joey Coulter just a line above him and Johnny Sauter up against the wall. I like the very bottom, especially down there in three and four where Matt Crafton is right now. Crafton finding some grip down there. Can he make the pass on Coulter? It doesn't appear that the bottom is quite as good down in one and two as it is in three and four. Let's we'll see what Crafton can do on exit of two. Out of two, he has the advantage over his teammate. And now Johnny Sauter's been able to get back up on the outside of him. 
about one more gain like that, and Crafton will have Sauter cleared. Yeah, that's just how you, you have to be so patient when you run that lower line like that. It's so easy to slide in there just a little too hard and lose all your momentum that you're gaining on the exit. Those two were fighting for the third the 13th spot the 30 running in the second position continues to climb that little almost cushion that's right up against the wall and moments ago he got into the wall pretty hard again that's right where he hit it earlier in the race and look how it just turns that truck sideways on the straightaway and never backs off the throttle and holds on to that second spot saw the sparks flying as he bounced off of the wall coming out of turn number four here comes Ty Dillon looking to the inside now trying to take that second spot away. See Kyle Larson's going to close that hole up. He's not going to give Ty Dillon any room to get back in there. Kyle Larson trying to steal the third position away from Ty Dillon who got out of line trying to take advantage of a little bit lower line and see if he could find some grip. Remember these guys race together on a weekly basis in the Nationwide Series as well as Kyle Larson racing Ty's older brother Austin for the rookie of the year battle in the Cup Series. Ty Dillon looking very impressive here on dirt, but may have just lost third position by getting out of line. Kyle Larson trying to take that position away. He dives down to the bottom of the track. He'll try to take second away from Ron Hornaday. The slide job works for the 32 of Larson. Now they're three wide for second. Hornaday does not like the people doing the slide job oh. on him. Looked All like the way up to the wall goes Kyle Larson. Hornaday takes a position back. Ty Dillon gets into Kyle Larson, spins him around. They get turned back around the right direction. Kyle Larson facing the right way, but the caution comes out. No caution. No, no caution. the caution's not going to come out. What about that? Kyle Larson gets spun around. Still in the top five. See a little bit of damage yep. to the front end of that glad truck. Eric Jones has problems over three and four. It looks like another flat tire possibly for the 51 truck. He looks like right race tire. Side. Ty Dillon just got into the wall. The caution comes out. Left rear tire down for Ty Dillon. It's a heck of a day at sea, sir. Everything started going all crazy. Ty Dillon gets into the back of the 32. Around goes Kyle Larson. You see the damage to the right front of that truck. Then just recently, maybe from that contact, the tire goes down on the three. Check this out. Hornaday makes the slide job, pays back the slide job. Larson looks like he shoots in the corner just a little bit too hard into the wall, loses his momentum, and Ty Dillon was just right there and hit him. And there's, right that's there. what cut his yep. left rear tire down when he went around the outside of Kyle Larson. Yep, caught that left rear tire with the front of the 32. Right, right at the last instant, right there. And that's what cut down that left rear tire for Ty Dillon. So Ty Dillon is on pit road. You will have to change the left side tires. It looks like they might change all four tires. Bob Diller. Danny Stockman, the crew chief, discussed with the official and said, we can change four tires. So that's what they're doing, despite just having a left rear flat. That truck's so good for Ty Dillon around this racetrack. Obviously, contact with Kyle Larson, that's what caused the left rear flap, but they will change all four tires. No adjustments, Ray. Well, the damage on Eric Jones' truck is a lot more severe than the first time when he just had a flat tire. He said he has wall up the right front caliper really badly. They'll have to try to pick the truck up to jack it up. They've got that done now. His Toyota Care Tundra said they may have to uh, make a major adjustment here. They've got the tire off, taking a look under the front there to see if they've got to close off the brake line on that right front. We'll keep you updated on what they've got to do. So a great battle in the top four. Darrell Wallace Jr. had There's moved out of the mayhem that was taking place behind him. But for the third position, Kyle Larson, Ty Dillon fighting it out. Under the lights for the Bud Summer Classic at Eldora Speedway. The event that everyone marks on their calendars as NASCAR has come back to dirt. 58 laps remaining. In this segment, we will go to lap 110, and 93 laps have been complete. Three of Ty Dillon came onto pit road because of a left rear tire that was cut down. He was running up in the top four. Take a look at this pit stop. 
Watch the fuel, man. Yep, he's, he's definitely going to engage. And the rule says no fueling other than on the competition caution. It says that you're not supposed to be able to change tires or add fuel unless it's a competition caution. But we have seen when a tire gets cut down, you can change that tire or those that side of tires. And we've seen that previously. I think just that one tire is what the, is what they should be allowed to change. So they should have been allowed to change that left rear tire. We saw Eric Jones only change the right front right. tire early in the first segment when he had a flat right front. I don't understand that. So I think NASCAR is looking at this. Danny Stockman, the crew chief, there on the right. He's been talking with the officials. You can see Kyle Larson gets a little deep into the corner, into the wall, and when he comes off the wall, ties right there. That's just a race, dirt track racing deal. But then Larson hits Dylan's right rear. Left rear. Left rear, excuse me. And around goes Larson. Right there, he cuts Dylan's left rear tire. So four fresh tires on the three. And you see Eric Jones back in the garage area in the infield. It'll be a tough break for them in the in a truck owner yep. points. I didn't. We're hearing that they're yep. NASCAR's posting the three right now, and Danny Stockman's trying to lobby his case. They may have allowed the four tire change for for some reason, which would have been a change in policy, but. Yeah, the the fuel thing fuel. was was a different story probably just right. a reflex by the fuel man to go ahead and put fuel in the three truck is now coming down pit road. I would assume that he, he will be held on pit road here. I think they're going to put on the right rear. I think they're making them change back to the old tires, but I don't know what they're going to do about the fuel. I guess they're letting them make this change because maybe the official didn't. Maybe the official right. approved the uh, changes. Bob, what are you hearing down there? Well, here's what happened. An official actually told Danny Stockman the wrong thing when Danny Stockman asked if he could change four tires. So the official said, hey, I made the mistake. He talked to Danny Stockman. So what they did is they brought the truck back in. They put the right rear back on it that was on it before they made that tire change, as well as the left front. So technically, they only changed those two tires during this pit stop sequence. So a little convoluted, a little confusing, but the official admitted to making a mistake, and they have corrected it with the three truck. I guess undoubtedly they're going to give him a pass on the fuel as well because we definitely saw the fuel man put fuel in that truck. Nor been coming off of they, pit road as they they've got to come in to put take the right rear tire off. They've not done the right rear tire yet. There was one lug nut missing on the left front, so there they're going to put the right rear tire on that uh, that they took off on the pit stop. Was the right front damaged too in that accident, and that's why they're letting them leave the new right front on it. Now, because of adding fuel, this is where they're penalizing the three team. Danny Stock was not appreciating this, but that was the rules. It was it was printed up on the rule sheet that they received. Bob Builder. Yeah, a lot of discussion down here. Dylan, Danny Stockman, and the officials down here, but because they did indeed add that fuel, and that was never part of the conversation with the official initially. The tires were part of the discussion. That was a mistake, but right now, Danny Stockman talking to two officials down here, and it is pretty heated about the fact that they did add fuel. It was a mistake, and they have penalized him a lap for it. Well, the good news is right now, Ty is only the, the, is the only truck one lap down, I believe, so if the caution flag were to come out and we know the caution flag is going to come out <laughs> in a few laps right. that uh, that he will get the free pass. 13 laps until we get to the next competition caution. Darrell Wallace Jr. in front Ron Hornaday running second Kyle Larson has made his way up to third but has that damage to the right front fender. Jeff Burton, Ryan Blaney, your top five. Ray Dunlap. The 51 was behind the wall a while, guys. They actually just busted the corner where the caliper and the line come together. So they were able to put a new fitting on there. They put in some brake fluid. He pumped it up. He said, now we're good to go. But at the time, he only had rear brakes, and that was going to be tough. So they fixed it, but he's a number of laps down. Hermie? Ray, the 32, Kyle Larson, a lot of damage to the right front and the nose of the truck. Crew Chief Mike Hillman came and looked at our monitor. 
Cena was okay, told Kyle Larson they're not going to pit. They're going to stay on the racetrack. Green flag back in the air. Great restart for Darrell Wallace Jr. And how about Kyle Larson trying to take second away in turns one and two? Yeah, Ron Honan, they really didn't get a very good start, so Kyle Larson jumped out to the inside. How about Ryan Blaine, another four wide? John Hunter Nemechek trying to break into the top four. Look at Ryan Blaine to get a little bit of grip down there on the bottom. It works. He moves up into the fourth spot. Jeff Burton into third. Ron Hornaday trying to hang on to second. See a lot of grip up off the bottom there on two. And look at Ryan Blaney take advantage of that. They're going to clear for the moment Kyle Larson. See if he can get off four like he did two and gain even more ground. If he can get in front of that 13 of Jeff Burton, that would be huge for Ryan Blaney. Nine laps away from our competition caution. The second one of the night. Darren Wallace Jr. out front. Ron Hornaday. Jeff Burton. And it's Kyle Larson and Ryan Blaney fighting for the fourth spot. What about this dominating performance that Darrell Wallace Jr. is putting on? He's led over 50 laps of this baby. Very impressive looking for his first multiple win season in the Camping World Truck Series. He has two wins already in his career. Looking to keep Kyle Busch Motorsports in victory lane. Seven of the nine races have been won by KBM. <laughs> Did you see that? Johnny Sauter and, and Tyler Reddick both went inside of Kenny Schrader. Matt Crafton was like, there's action all over the place. This is an amazing race. Great racetrack. Take a look at the 19 of Tyler Reddick. There really wasn't any room for, to do what he did, and he made it work anyway. How's that happen? Drove it down even harder and able to make it stick. What a great view out of the back of that 19 truck of Tyler Reddick at Kenny Schrader. Under six laps to go before our next competition caution. Darrell Wallace Jr., Ron Hornaday, Jeb Burton, Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney, your top five. John Hunter Nemechek, six. Ty Timothy Peterson's in the seventh spot. Tyler Reddick is eighth. Matt Kraft in ninth. And Kenny Schrader, tenth. Remember last year, Timothy Peters was pretty quiet. Ended up with a top ten finish here in this dirt track race. Matt Crafton coming into this race, your points leader. But just by two over Ryan Blaney. Right now, Blaney running in the fifth spot. He would be taking away the points lead. And we leave Eldora if he can hang on. Kyle Larson all over the back of Jeff Burton's 13 truck. What about Larson? He got into that crash. He tore his nose up, but still challenging for that third spot. I think it's damaged that truck, Michael, but I don't think they feel like they can afford to give up the track position. Kyle Larson still riding right up against the wall. Dar Wallace Jr. trying to hang on. Just three laps to go until the competition caution. The big question is, will anyone chance it and come to pit road under this competition caution coming up? Or will they all stick with what they've got? I think you got to stay out, Mikey, don't you? I think so, Phil. We see that we haven't seen anybody really make a huge run through the field other than Ty Dillon early in the race. There's been some guys make some progress, but as strong of a truck that Bubba Wallace has, I don't see how he can give up that lead. Ty's going to have nothing to lose if he can get the free pass. There's no there's no reason for him not to come down pit road. Go ahead and put four tires on. He'll have the freshest tires in the field. Not sure if it's going to be enough in 40 laps for him to overcome the track position. You know, we talk about the guys, the leaders running right against the wall. Well, Matt Crafton's running against the wall also. The other one. The other one. <laughs> He's the had his truck down on the bottom of this track since the word go. He's making a bit of progress. He's been able to drive into the top ten. It's kind of plateaued out there in the eighth or ninth spot, but it's been slow treading. He's had to really be patient. Well, competition yellow. Competition caution has come out once again. So now the strategy will come into play. We'll see Ty Dillon. I'm sure he will get the free pass from NASCAR because he is the highest scored truck that is a lap down. So he will be back on the lead lap. How far back in this group? Would you decide, okay, it's better to come in and maybe make an adjustment or put tires on? I don't know, maybe outside the top 15 or something like that, possibly. 
you know, Schrader's a guy you have to look at. He only runs every now and then. All he hears you're here to do is win. His truck obviously isn't in shape to win right now. Maybe he pits. Kenny Schrader running in the ninth position. Austin Dillon back there in 12th. Potentially, he would make a move to pit road. Joey Coulter in the 14th spot has been very good on dirt in the past. Culture's an interesting story. Never in much dirt growing up, Rick, and he heard about the race at Eldora. It hikes like a, look at how much it hikes. Is it something? He doesn't like that truck, you know. It hadn't handled well for him, and he's talking about maybe a sway bar issue or possibly a shock because the thing's hiking up when he cuts the wheels. What, what are they saying in the pit, Bob? Well, initially they thought the power steering was gone on that truck, and he said it's like the truck is catching. You know, it catches in the middle of the corner and it just stops steering for a second. And then now they think they might have a shock or a spring busted on the left front. There's a lot of conversation going on between Austin Dillon and his crew chief, Nick Harrison, right now. They're debating about whether or not, you know, to come down pit road right now to take a look at it and whether or not he could survive the rest of the distance. So a lot of conversation right now, guys. A lot of decisions to be made, too. Also, Bob, how far back in the field do you decide to come to pit road. I talked to Jerry Baxter down in the pits earlier today and his plan was definitely to stay out right here. So we'll see if Jerry was being honest with Uncle Mike. Well, maybe the plan plans have changed. <laughs> well, pit road Those is open and Bubba's not going anywhere near it, but Kyle Larson looks like he is. He's down low. Nope, no, he's, he's gonna, gonna, he's gonna he's stay gonna out. track. Looks like everybody's faking now coming down pit road. Matt Crafton Matt 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 makes the move. And there's so does Austin, Austin Dillon. Dillon. Joey Coulter can't make up his mind. Bob Dillner. Austin Dillon was running outside the top 10, so they have nothing to lose. They want to talk about this situation with that catch in the wheel in the middle of the corner to find out exactly what it is and pinpoint that. But it'll be a two-tire stop, certainly, for Austin Dillon during this pit stop. Actually, now a four-tire stop. They will change all four tires on this machine and then send that two-truck out there. But conversation right now between the two, but they have not diagnosed the problem, right? Matt Crafton said, we aren't good enough to win right now. Let's try something. And they said, we'll do that. We want to look this suspension over again one time. They'll take a tear off off the windshield, make sure that the front of the grill is clean, and put four tires on this thing for Matt Crafton. They gave up a top 10 running spot, but they want to try to win. In the big picture, he was racing against Ryan Blaney for a championship. Blaney stays on the track in fifth. NASCAR's night on dirt is back. The Mud Summer Classic. We are two segments down, one to go. 110, now 112 laps complete in this race. Let's give you a little bit look at the highlights, what we've seen. That's Ryan Blaney in the number 29, hitting the wall early in the race, chasing down Darrell Wallace Jr., who's been out front for much of the race tonight. That is our pole sitter in the 51, Eric Jones. Eric Jones spinning there, having a lot of issues. A disappointing night for him, but his teammate, we mentioned the 54, Darrell Wallace Jr., taking the lead from the veteran, 56-year-old Ron Hornaday. It's 20-year-old Darrell Wallace Jr. out front. That's Ty Dillon in the number three. A lot of dirt experience getting into that veteran there. A little kiss for Ron Hornaday. And then, look at this. Ty Dillon in that three making contact with the rear end of the 32, Kyle Larson. And Kyle Larson had been steaming his way up through the field. So had Ty Dillon at that point. Ty Dillon having trouble on the track as well. But again, our leader, Darrell Wallace Jr. Quite a night. 237 stripes. That's the stripe crowd here at Eldora Speedway. And one thing I want to note, standing here on top of the building that overlooks the front stretch here at Eldora Speedway, uh, when we've seen some great action. At one moment in that second segment, we saw young John Hunter Nemechek, 17 years old, with no dirt experience, squeeze his way between Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, making his way up front. Tony Stewart, who was standing just a few feet away from me on top of this building, came up to me and said, now that is legitimate for wide racing. He had a big smile on his face, as do most of these fans, a packed house here at Eldora Speedway. Bob? Krista, a lot of emotion in Ty Dillon's pit earlier. Danny Stockman is the crew chief 
What was the confusion about there from your team and what NASCAR officials were talking to you about? Uh, the confusion to start with was uh, whether we were allowed to put four tires on or, or two. And uh, we thought we had a right front flat, and uh, we knew we had a left rear flat, and we did. We had a right front and left rear, and, and uh, he, the official told us we were able to put four tires on, so we did. And uh, we come back in and uh, took the took the left front and right rear off. You know that, that we're, we're racing tires, and uh, when you do that stuff, you get mixed match tires, and it's just for, unfortunate. We got a really good hot rod here, and. Uh, had a shot to win, I thought, but we ain't giving up yet. We're going to the front here. Was there just miscommunication on the fact that you added fuel and that's where the, indeed, the penalty came from? Yeah, that's where the penalty come from was adding fuel. We got, they held us a lap there, but uh, that's all behind us. We got a lot of trucks in front of us and uh, we're going to, we're going to see what we can do here. Krista, Ty Dillon, 27th, one lap down. Yeah, a lot of frustration for that team. Ty Dillon having one of the best trucks out here, but who will win? Tonight, the answer is coming up next. Just back underway with the Mud Summer Classic, the final segment. 36 laps remaining. And this is the second annual Mud Summer Classic from Eldora Speedway. Three wide right now for the fourth spot. There's it was for a moment. How about Austin Dillon trying to make his way back towards the front? There's Matt Crafton right on the bottom of the racetrack where he's been most of this race. Out in front of the field, Darrell Wallace Jr. running comfortably right up against the wall. Ron Hornaday holding on to second. Kyle Larson is third. Jeff Burton fourth. Ryan Blaney's fifth. And Ryan did some serious racing on the on the lap after the restart to get to the bottom of the track and grab a spot. He seems to have a really fast truck field. One of the few guys that can go low and make things happen. We've got to keep our eye on Ty Dillon and Matt Crafton pitting, trying to make something happen for their trucks. As well as Austin Dillon, too. There's Austin in front of Matt Crafton down on the bottom. Kyle Larson a little bit quicker. Here's the restart. Jeff Burton was jumping way down low, but it ended up being Ryan Blaney that chose the lowest line. And look at Hornaday. He almost squeezes Bubba Wallace into the outside wall. And right into the back of Darrell Wallace Jr. was that 32 of Kyle Larson. That was on the restart. And for second, here comes Kyle Larson. He'll make the pass on Hornaday. Hornaday's going to try to grab it back. He goes to the bottom, tries the slide job. Will he have room? Kyle Larson checks up. Now gets back into the gas, trying to take it back. The fight for second is on. Larson on the bottom of the racetrack. Hornaday drives him down low, then back up to the wall. They're side by side for second. Hornaday bouncing off the wall a couple times. Getting slowest momentum at all. Now Kyle Larson tucks back in behind him. Jeff Burton holding on to that fourth spot. Ryan Blaney is fifth. And if you're Darrell Wallace Jr. looking in your mirror and seeing those two guys fighting like that, that is the best thing you could see in the whole world. He knows Larson's going to be tough as this race winds down. He gets around Hornaday and have another restart. Larson could cause a lot of problems for Bubba Wallace. Once again, here goes Kyle Larson. Easily will take second away from Hornaday. Will Hornaday try to go back by as Larson gets back into the wall? He's not going to have it up. But here he goes once again. Three wide for second. Jeb Burt says, let me get in on the fun. Larson keeps the momentum up on the high side. Can he hold on to second? He does. Jeff Burton now will try to knock off that 30 and get into the third spot. And oh, by the way, these guys are teammates, the 32 of Larson, the 30 Hornaday. And we talked about 237 Eldora stripes. That was just Kyle Larson. <laughs> 237 for him. Now let's see if he can close it down. The gap between one and two is just under two seconds. 1.7 seconds last time they went by. He has 28 laps to go. Can he reel him in, or will Bubba Wallace win again in the Camping World Truck Series? How about John Hunter Nemechek right there, solidly in the sixth spot behind Ryan Blaney. Ty Dillon bouncing off the wall in front of his brother Austin. Ty's made his way up just outside the top ten, racing Matt Crafton now. Crafton trying to hold on to that 11 spot. The last time by our second place driver, Kyle Larson, a full three and a half tenths faster than our leader, Bubba Wallace. I knew when he got that place position away from Hornaday, he would put a charge on him. 
And how about the Dillons right now? Running 12th and 13th, Bob. And Rick, Ty Dillon is on the move right now. He's told Danny Stockman before they took the green, they received the lucky dog back on the lead lap, pressing for a top 10, that they still think they could contend for the win. But as far as Austin Dillon, we talked about all the problems. They went up under the hood to see what it was. A broken heim joint on the suspension in the left front. That is an ill-handling truck right now. The gap has closed. The 32 of Kyle Larson. Now is on the back bumper of that 54 of Darrell Wallace Jr. Darrell Wallace Jr. searching the track, trying to find some grip. All he sees in his rearview mirror is the 32 of Kyle Larson. Until Kyle Larson found some grip right up next to the outside wall. We saw how Kyle Larson was able to do the slide job on Ron Hornaday. Will he try the same move on Darrell Wallace Jr. to get the lead? Here he yes, comes he right will. here. Into turn one. Tries the slide job. Oh, Makes the pass clear, into clear. the wall. Here comes Bubba here. Wallace on the by. inside. Side by side. The fans are on their feet. Caution yelled comes up, out. There was a truck turn around right there, right in front of them as they raced off of turn two. How could that truck possibly withstand? They're still racing. They haven't decided who's going to have the lead yet. Out, back it down. Yeah, it isn't up to them to decide. That's a NASCAR call. I don't understand their... Well, I guess you're getting into the moment. Yep, you can't they just were come off the gas. How, how, does that, how does that 32 truck stand? That big bounce into the wall. That thing bounced off the ground a foot. He's, he's going to knock the nose off that truck. When the caution came out, we'll Watch have this. to find out who was in front of who. Look at that. Into the wall, but he still had the advantage. Down the back stretch they go as that truck was... <laughs> Right there. Oh, by the way. Listen. As soon as he hit the wall, he gassed it up. Unbelievable. <laughs> and they're still arguing over who was the leader. <laughs> Darrell Wallace Jr. <laughs> might pass the pace truck. Here comes the battle for the lead. Jody Knowles in the 80 was facing the wrong way. Check out my right side. It's it's messed up. Kyle. Stay off the wall here for me. And NASCAR has let us know the 32 is your race leader, so he will choose either the inside or outside line. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you're about the last round of play, so it'll be all right. Look at the damage on the right side of the 32. Camping World. 20 to go. We have reached that mark. Can and you believe it's just 20 to go? And by the way, the guy that's leading with 20 to go has just had a crash. <laughs> yes. I mean, we talk about scrapes and rubs along this Rossberg wall, but that was a crash. I mean, he hit the wall and bounced off the ground. Yeah, the right rear is sticking out from the quarter panel. He's got damage to the left rear. He's got damage to the right front. And he's your race leader. Hermie Sadler. Well, Mike Hillman, I thought several times ago you'd have that truck down pit road to fix the damage, but your driver's going to the front. He said if I get to second, I can get it done. That much confidence in your driver? I do. I got all the confidence in the world. Kyle Larson, everybody that works their butts off here at Turner Scott Motorsports. You know, it's it's nice to be up front and have a blast, and we'll see how this all shakes out right here. Well, he dove Bob to the bottom, got the lead. And now, can you hold him, Ray? Jerry Baxter is crew chief for Bubba Wallace. What have you told your driver? It's pretty wild out there. He's told him to be smart. You know, Larson's uh, used up a lot of his car. He's banging that thing off the fence. So, you know, that ain't going to happen all night long. Something's going to happen eventually here. So we just got to keep looking at the big picture, too. We need to keep top fiving him to death. And, and uh, he's doing a great job. I'm so proud of him. He's, he's, he's wheeling the tundra tonight. All right. He's talking about points. I think Bubba's talking about a trophy at Eldora. And so Kyle Larson chooses the outside line. Green flag back in the air. They're all going to dive bomb him. And hard into turn one and two. Darrell Wallace Jr. steals the lead away. Here comes Hornaday. Kyle Larson hanging on to that outside line. He'll hold on to second. Holy cow, I cannot believe what I'm seeing. 
He has wrecked his truck and he still, he lost the lead, but yet Kyle Larson still in hot pursuit of Bubba Wallace. They were three wide for the third spot. Hornaday trying to hang on to it. Ryan Blaney on the inside. Jeff Burton back there, John Hunter Nemechek, a very impressive night, as well as Ken Schrader making his way up and, and challenging for a top five spot. Ty Dillon also making his way up into the top ten. Kyle Larson into the wall once again, 295 times I was now. Say, that's, a no, that's, that's pretty much happening every lap. There's Ty Dillon, right side of your screen, racing Johnny Sauter for the eighth position. Darrell Wallace Jr. on the restart, grabs the lead away from Kyle Larson as they cross the stripe, just 15 laps of racing to go. You know, when Wallace was able to get around Larson on that start and Kyle got such a bad start, I thought maybe the toe end was knocked off on that truck and he would just fade gracefully. Well, it is knocked off, I'm sure, but you can't hit the wall that hard, but he's doing everything but fading gracefully. Trying to hang on to the back bumper of that 54, Darrell Wallace Jr. Putting together some impressive laps, lap after lap. Bubba Wallace is running two or three tenths of a second faster than he was when Kyle Larson chased him down and took over the lead. Working their way through three and four. The battle now for the fifth spot. Here comes Kenny Schrader. What about this run Schrader's making late in the going? Kenny Schrader has taken fifth away from the 13 of Jeff Burton. Here comes John Hunter Nemechek looking to the inside of Burton as well. As the laps wind down, the gap closes once again between the 54 and the 32. Kyle Larson, imagine that, he bounced off the wall again. These two are fighting for position. It was Ken Schrader who had it. John Hunter Nemechek was trying to take it away. And how about the three of Ty Dillon? Right back in the mix, he's in the eighth spot. Danny Stockman said they were going to pass a lot of trucks coming to the front. He's all the way up to eight. And he's going for seventh. He's on the inside of Jeb Burton coming off turn four. And the 32 continues to bounce off the wall. He did it again going into turn one. And there's another replay on the right side where he hits it again. He's still on the gas, though. He was second last year. He said it was painful running second year. He wanted to win so bad. You can see that passion. You can see that desire as he's just doing everything he can to close in on Bubba Wallace. The sheet metal on that truck is painful right now. He has beat the right side of that truck almost completely off as he is using everything in his power to reel in that 54 of Darrell Wallace Jr. But you gotta give credit to Darrell Wallace Jr. He's running faster lap times than Kyle Larson was running when he ran Bubba down. So Bubba's made an adjustment inside that truck. He's figured out where some grip is, and he's going to town. I think he moved up the racetrack where Kyle Larson was running about a half a truck width up the racetrack, and it's given some more speed. Here's Austin Dillon in the middle, three wide. Matt Crafton in the 88 on the outside. Tyler Reddick in the 19 on the inside. That's a three-way battle for the 10th spot right there. And the field continuing to work around this half-mile dirt oval at Eldora Speedway. Under eight laps of racing to go. The top two coming out of turn number four. It'll be seven to go now for Darrell Wallace Jr. I think Kyle Larson's hitting the wall two or three times a corner. I thought you were going to say a lap, Phil, and I think it's more than that. I'm, I'm going to go with you on two or three times the corner. With time running out, the gap widens between Kyle Larson and Darrell Wallace Jr. And Darrell Wallace Jr. win at another historic track. His first win came at Martinsville a year ago. That time by, the fastest truck on the track is Kyle Larson. They're able to cut about two tenths off that lead of Darrell Wallace Jr. Well, right now, Bubba Wallace said, please, let's stay green. Kyle Larson bounces off the fence a couple more times and closes in even more. He's there again. The Camping World Truck Series went back to Gateway this year. And in that visit, it was the 54 of Darrell Wallace Jr. that went to Victory Lane. He was able to celebrate at the arch, and now he wants to celebrate on the dirt. But he has got a very hungry Kyle Larson beating down his back bumper and the wall that time by four laps of racing to go as quickly as they are turning laps they're closing in on the back of the field this is amazing oh larson into the wall hard again 
That had to do him in, didn't it? You would think so. He stays in the gas. Three laps of racing to go. That might be just enough gap for Bubba Wallace here. The fans know something big is about to happen. Everyone on their feet for the final three laps. Can Darrell Wallace Jr. hang on, get his third career win, or will it be Kyle Larson, who came back to Eldora wanting to get that victory? Oh, that's it. Slams off the wall coming out of turn number four. That might be all he's got. Two laps of racing to go, and it looks as though the right front broke on Kyle Larson's truck. Can he whip around? Here comes Ron Hornaday to take second away. What an Darryl effort, though. Wallace Jr. has a, a full straightaway in front of Ron Hornaday. The white flag in the air. Darrell Wallace Jr. has put on a clinic here at Eldora Speedway on dirt. He has been out front for 97 laps. The 98th is coming now. Checkered flag, Checkered right here, nice flag job, for Darrell Wallace Jr. Holy cow! No way! <laughs> Darrell Wallace Jr. Bubba wins at the historic Eldora Speedway. I'm speechless. That's the that's the most most inner energy driven run to the checker. Kyle Larson. Uh, he, he, he was doing everything he could possibly do to get the win, and yet Bubba sat there and remained calm in that cab of that pickup truck and was able to drive to victory lane. Third career win for Darrell Wallace Jr. <laughs> and eight out of ten races in the 2014 season have been won by Kyle Busch Motorsports. Ray Dunlap. Standing by with Jerry Baxter winning crew chief. Congratulations. Look, the Martinsville win was a big one, obviously. But you guys have won at Eldora. How did you pull it off? I'm at a loss right here. I got to tell you, our whole team, you know, KBM, the, the, all this Toyota Tundras, they've just been great every race. We worked really hard this 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 whole winter. And, and man, our drivers are doing great. I'm just, I'm just thrilled. I'm thrilled. KBM has won 11 of the last 15 races in the Camping World Truck Series. That's amazing. It's domination. We saw it out of Kevin Harvick Incorporated a couple years back when they were really showing off, getting to victory lane almost every other race. But now it's Kyle Busch Motorsports and Darrell Wallace Jr. Here's tonight's Ram Guts and Glory. How about on that restart? We see the 54 of Darrell Wallace Jr. Jump in front of the 32 of Kyle Larson. He'll do it again. That was the pass for the win right there. That got him to victory lane. Kyle Larson did everything he could to try to chase him down, get that lead back, but at the end, it was all Bubba Wallace. Guts on the restart. On the restart, payoff, and now the glory. Let's go to victory lane and Ray Dunlap. He had a win at St. Louis. He had a second at Kentucky. He won the pole at Iowa. And now today, Bubba Wallace picks up his third career win in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Did you ever think you were going to win? Did you ever think you were going to win a race on dirt? No, I didn't. How'd you do it? <laughs> These guys right here are all behind me. Uh... God, that's so cool on dirt, Eldora. I got frustrated earlier. Jerry come in the truck just now. Says that usually got frustrated at not able to how to figure it out, and I was like, no, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. So, God, man, really, Eldora. Huge thanks to these guys here, Toyota, Coca-Cola, Alpine Stars, Beam Designs, the whole nine, NASCAR, Tony Stewart and his whole staff, Roger Slack. We go way back. Um, it's it's awesome here. So. Got this awesome gold shovel, but the cool thing about it is I came into this like kind of skeptical. I knew we finished top five last year, top seven, run top five all night. And I was worried about the Toyota streak, not to, not to, not to lie. And to be able to come out here, Eric Jones said on the pole, another shout out to KBM, um, Toyota keeping the streak alive. So now we can go back to a 
Pocono asphalt racetrack and really keep that streak going now. So huge thanks to everybody right here. Uh, but the season started out really poorly. You guys were kind of in a funk and you didn't know for sure how it was going to turn around. What's been the difference? I think my crew chief showed up. So that was uh, <laughs> no. Um, it's just the, the trials and tribulations that we go through. And um, this team, they never give up. And we had a lot of downs last year. And, and I, I'm, I'm over getting upset about those. Uh, we, we talked about Iowa. We moved on from it. And I said we're going to bounce back. Did I not say we're going to bounce back in the right here in the parade laps? And um, this is a hell of a way to bounce back. So um, I wish my mom was here. But this is a good luck streak. She hasn't won in Martinsville. She wasn't at Martinsville. She wasn't at Gateway. She ain't coming in no more. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba Wallace got the golden shovel. He'll be digging the dirt on the front stretch in a bit, guys. What an incredible battle it was. It was not an easy win. <laughs> oh, no. Wallace Jr. He had one of the best on dirt right on his back bumper. So right there. He just got in a little hot, slid the front tires, and that got that truck hard in the outside wall. He had hit it really hard. 100 times, Phil? At least 100 but, times. But that last one was the one that did him in. And so many times he got into the wall. This is what he had to say just as he got into the wall the last time. I'm sorry, guys. Really sorry. It's all good. They knew he was here. We took a shot at him. We'll get another shot at these boys at Pocono. Yes, sir. Hermie.